Welcome to Shirt Cover Lit. Cock. We squeeze the bigger picture out of litter, Shrine so Matering and Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here for a review today, a review of... We are reading Sea Oak by George Saunders. And I have the best quotes from this book. From, I am so excited. From about. whence you got your new favorite word. I but know, we're going right? to do a uh, short summary. Three good things, three bad things. Uh, quotes, literary analysis, rating, and recommendation from the text Sea Oak by George Saunders. What happens? This is uh, slipstream fiction. Are you familiar with the word slipstream? I just, I've discovered so many words today, and I'm so excited about it. Uh, this is a very bizarre story about a, a, I'd say, impoverished family, and their aunt passes away and comes back to life and haunts them. Haunt is the proper word there? Uh, ish. Ish. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of thematic things going on there. There is, there is. Uh, so let's just roll with that, because I don't know how to describe this okay, story. Okay, so what are your three good things? Three good things. Uh, this is Saunders at his finest. This is a satirical, anti-consumerism, modern Kurt Vonnegut, which means I love this. Uh, the concepts of this text are foreign, but feel very familiar. This text flows very easily, and although it's completely bizarre and weird, it feels real to you, and that's good to capture. And finally, Saunders, as he does best, will make you hurt throughout this. Uh, it's brilliant. Saunders can form an emotional attachment to the complete bizarre. This is funny. This is weird. But if you really look into it, you're like, ah, shit. Very I, sad and depressing. Hurts. Very, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the best jokes, it has the punch of a truism. Um, if you're going to bring up Vonnegut, one of Vonnegut's rules for writing, if I am remembering correctly, was to pity the reader. Okay. Um... Job number one, therefore, of a writer is to entertain. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. It was an entertaining piece. Number two, I'll be goddamned if this piece does not make you depressed while making you laugh. Okay. And three, this story is smooth and fast. Yes. And I'd like to ask you maybe some, because this is your first exposure to this text, yes? This text, yes. We've done a lot of Saunders in the past, right. but this is my first Sea Oak. Uh, and I'm going to comment on the fast thing here because I got a little bit of a beef with that. So, so these are your three bad things? We're going to three bad things here. Uh, like I said, this is slipstream fiction, and that can be a little hard to swallow at times. It's really strange. It's really bizarre. You have to be in that mood for that. Uh, I wouldn't chalk this up to its typical Saunders humor piece. It's very subtle in a way. I, it, it, there's a lot of humor here. There's a lot of punch here, but it's a very subtle piece. Does that make sense to you? I feel like I I feel like that'll be a discussion justify. piece. I feel like that'll okay. be a discussion piece. Uh, and finally, <laughs> the ending of this is incredibly rushed. There's a lot of build up here, and then it's over. And I don't like that. I okay. Do. Anyway, what do you have? Um, I think it can be relatively difficult to nail down a non shit on capitalism slash the United States theme here. Yeah. Uh, so when you're closing off your literature in that way, it sort of limits the readings. Okay. Right, so it limits the utility of the text to an extent. Two, uh, Saunders often leaves me wanting a straight man. There are too many goofy characters in Saunders. There's no one to step back and say, whoa, 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 what's going on here? No in for the reader. Okay. So that's where the slipstream sort of comes into play, right? Okay. That there's no, there's no straight man. There's no in. There's no hook for the common reader. And three, uh, sometimes when I read the story... I'm sad that I don't know where Saunders gets his weed. <laughs> okay. I'll give you that 100%. So quotes. Do you have quotes? I do have quotes, and I have two quotes today, if I may. Okay. Uh, first of all, I think this quote completely, uh, it, this is the essence of this piece, this quote here. Uh, Down in the city are the nice houses and the so-so houses and the lovers making out in dark yards and the babies crying for their moms. And I wonder if, other than Jesus, this ever happened before. Maybe it happens all the time. Maybe there's angry dead all over, hiding in rooms covered with blankets, bossing around their scared, embarrassed relatives. Because how would we know? Very good quote, Saunders. I like you. Uh, and on the opposite page here, the kissing, kissing page, page, if I will. I think that's an Adrian, Adrian term. I, I just, like, I've, like, taken a lot of Adrian terms and, like, put them into my life. And I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? Oh, yep, okay. Uh, the kissing page. Look, show your cock. It's the shortest line between two points. The world ain't giving away nice lives. You got a trust fund? You a genius? Show your cock. It's what you got. 
It's so funny because that's in the middle of a paragraph, right? It is. That is the exact same quote from that paragraph I picked out. Really? Yes. Really? Look, Please, right here, right here. Please. Please. Your quote, if you don't. Okay. So I have, I am going to read, you picked two of the quotes that I had, so really? which, which makes me happy because the other two quotes I have are fairly long and I didn't necessarily want to be reading for that long. I think that it is necessary. I'm going for the hard sell here. Okay. So if you have, if you are watching this and you have not read this story, I'm going to read some of the opening page here just to sell you. At six, Mr. Front comes on the PA and shouts, "Welcome to Joysticks!" Then he announces, "Shirts off." We take off our we f- take our flight jackets off and fold them up. We take off our shirts and fold them up. Our scarves we leave on. Thomas Kirster's our beautiful boy. He's got long muscles and bright blue eyes. The minute his shirt comes off, two fat ladies hustle up the aisle and stick some money in his pants and ask him if he will be their pilot. He says sure. He brings their salads. He brings their soups. My phone rings, and the caller tells me to come see her in the Spitfire mock-up. Does she want me to be her pilot? I'm hoping. Inside the Spitfire is Margie, who says she's been diagnosed with chronic shyness syndrome, then hands me an Instamatic and offers me ten bucks for a close-up of Thomas's tush. Do I do it? Yes, I do. It could be worse. It could be wor- it could is it is worse for Lloyd Betts. Lately he's put on weight, his hair's gone thin. He doesn't get a call all shift and waits at zero tables and winds up sitting on the P fifty one wing, playing solitaire and hunched in a hunched over position that gives him big gut rolls. I pilot six tables and make forty dollars in tips, plus five an hour in salary. After closing we sit on the floor for debriefing. There are times, Mr. Friend says, when one must move gracefully from one station in life, for example, certain women uh, one must move on to the next station in life. For example, certain women in Africa or Brazil, I don't remember which, who either color their faces or don some kind of distinctive headdress upon achieving menopause. Are you with me? One of our ranks must now leave us. No one is an island in terms of being thought cute forever. And so today we must say goodbye to our friend Lloyd. Lloyd, stand up so everyone can say goodbye to you. I'm sorry. We are all so very sorry. No one's sorry. No, it's right. No. Um, so I think that, that that little bit of intro there really gives you a, a dig into the story. And if you don't hear that and want to read the story, then there might be no saving you in okay. literary terms. A little bit later. Right off the bat, I get a table full of many bin women seated under a banner saying, Best of luck, Beatrice. No hard feelings. I take off my shirt and serve their salads. I take off my flight pants and serve their soups. One drops a dollar on the floor and tells me to feel free to pick it up. I pick it up. Not like that, she says. Face the other way, so when you bend, we can see your crack. I've done this a million times, but somehow I can't do it now. I look at her. She looks at me. What, she says. I'm not allowed to say that. I thought this was the whole point. That is the whole point, Phyllis, says another lady. You stand your ground. Look, Phyllis says. Either bend how I say or give the dollar back. I think that's fair. You go, girl, says her friend. I give back the dollar. I return to the locker area and sit for a while. For the first time ever, I'm voted stinker. There are 13 women in the Medibin table, and they all vote me stinker. Do the Medibin women know my situation? Would they vote me stinker if they did? But what am I supposed to do? Go on and say, please, ladies, my aunt just died, plus her body's missing? Mr. Front pulls me aside. Perhaps you need to go home, he says. I'm sorry for your loss, but I'd like to encourage you not to behave like one of our Comanche ladies who bite off their finger, index fingers when a loved one dies. Grief is good, grief is fine, but too much grief, as we all know, is excessive. And your aunt's death has filled your mouth with too many bitten off fingers for crying out loud. Take a week off, only don't take it out on our guests. They didn't kill your dang aunt. Okay. I think that last I, I, quote... I'm realizing now how much the, the boss sounds like Donald Trump. Okay. I see. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sorry sure. for your loss, but I'd like to encourage you not to behave like one of our Comanche ladies. That's the thing, though. I have a terrible Donald Trump impression, by yeah, the way. I thought I it was adequate. Thing. I'll yeah. give you adequate. I, I think that brings up a good point with Saunders. What we're talking about here is this is different. This is bizarre. This is strange. But this is also very real. I'll let you know right now that if I go to work and say, hey, I'm having a bad day, this is what I've got going on, well, blah, 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 well, that's not my problem now, is it? You need to go do right. your job. 
and take if, your time off and do your job. And if Dalton ever goes a day at work without being told to bend over so they can see his ass crack, it's the day's ruined. It is. It is. I'm very upset by it. Uh, so what do you want to talk about with this here? Um, Where would you like to start? I'm, I, I will defer to you because this is your first reading of the text. Okay. Where would you like to start? Uh, like I said, I've done a lot of Saunders before. We went through all of the 10th of December, which if you'd like to check out, you want to check out the links over inside here. Uh, let's talk a little bit first that I found the word slipstream fiction. Are you familiar with that? A bit. Okay. Uh, definition of slipstream is a kind of fantastic or non-realistic fiction that crosses conventional boundaries between science fiction, fantasy, and literary fiction. So I do think Saunders does a lot of slipstream. That's uh, his writing style. I just think it's good to, you know, get a basis of what we're talking about here, a word we can call it. Uh, but I think the biggest thing here is the heavy push towards the anti-consumerist attitude. This is where we're going. This is Saunders' warning to, let's say, America, wherever you want to place this, that if we continue down this path, this is where we're going. Uh, these are people who are completely enveloped in wanting to please their primal self. They're wanting to give in to vices. They're wanting to give in to pleasure. And the entire world has been built around that now. Am I correct here? It is, and it has not to an extent. Okay. Um, so is it a primal pleasure to be forced into the sexual position that our protagonist is forced into? No, but the service he's providing... Right, right. Feeds into that. Correct. So it, it, it's... There is the great with and without in this text, okay. right? Those with can exploit those without for anything they want. It doesn't have to be primal. Okay. Um, and those without are left wanting everything that they see, right? Look at Min and Jade. Okay. The sister and the cousin, is it? I think uh, so. That are, that are, they want everything. Yes. They, want, they have no idea what it is. They have no idea how to use anything. They want everything. Okay. And I think it's interesting, like, that's the point that I'm focusing on first and foremost. Because if you haven't read this text here, and we have the large spoiler alert, alert uh, Aunt Bernie dies. Aunt <laughs> Bernie goes missing. I love the way Aunt Bernie. It makes me happy. Aunt Bernie returns as a talking corpse. Yeah. It was super powerful. Super powerful magic talking corpse with this great enlightened vision of the world around her. She knows how to fix things. And she's going to make things better. But that's not the piece, that's not what you focus on on this. No. Uh, which is one hell of a trick. It is. It is. But it, you have to focus on the family here. You have to focus on the realistic, the people that this is affecting. You know these people. You know these people. You do. I, and this is like a very impoverished family. I and mean, they've obviously gone through a lot and their aunt has just died. There's a period of time where they're trying to come up with the money to just give her a headstone. Yeah. Just, you know, to see old Aunt Bernie off right. And, like, that's where the hurt comes in with this. I think there's a lot of places where the hurt comes in with this because one of the things that I think this text is trying to teach you is that you have to forecast. Okay. Right? Uh, Aunt Bernie never forecasted. Uh, okay. Jade and Min certainly are not forecasting, and neither is our protagonist. So what happens is she comes back with this two-faced plan. Says, look, you got to show your cock. You show your cock, we'll get a nice place. You go to school, we'll get a nice place. Okay. So she comes back with this plan because no one in this world has one. They're just living their life day to day in very consumerist fashion. Today I wake up, I want this, let's spend that money. Okay. So that is what, for me, that is what is going on here. That is where the real pain comes. That's where this becomes a tearjerker, is that there is so much going on with people who are completely ignorant to their own circumstance. Okay. Um, and I will argue a bit that I don't think the ending is rushed. Really? Because the whole thing is on a freight train. Okay. So I, I, that first quote I gave, the first page of the story, you're picking up that he, he works basically at a male Hooters. Yes. You're picking up that this is maybe futuristic. You're picking up that um, you can be voted off the island of the workplace, right? There are so many things happening so fast in this piece that for a dead woman to, to die again, being rushed, I think... She, how long is she... She's got to be around for a quarter of the story. Okay, she is. But here's my issue again. Uh, Bernie dies for yeah. the second time. And we have maybe a page and a half. Afterwards? Yeah. So it, it's not that it's rushing towards a conclusion. It's once the piece concludes and we should have a little bit of finishing action... 
October. And maybe that's part of what we're getting at here is things are rushed. This is a freight train. It is barreling forward because everything does happen very fast in this. But I wanted a little more conclusion. Yeah, I, I, I think that on a meta level, if I may go there, mm. um, that is supposed to represent, that is supposed to force the feeling in the reader that the, that the world feels like. I worded that terribly. You can tell these people feel their lives are on a freight train. Okay. Because they have no idea what's going on one moment to the next. Okay. I think that that forces you as a reader to, to want to step back and slow down. Okay. Because it never does for them. And I think if you ever are in that position where, I mean, sometimes money gets tight, man. And when money's tight like that, it is a freight train. Because I had dinner today. Might have dinner tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to figure it out when we get there. And we're going to hope nothing breaks in the meantime. Nothing breaks. That car's going to get me to work. <laughs> yeah. That gas tank's going to hold yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, it's an understandable feeling. And I think that's the beauty of Saunders is he can take those very real emotions and put them into this very bizarre, very funny world. But you still feel it. You still know, man. Why? Well, I think one of the ways that he is able to accomplish that is that he does not just take things. He takes things that you take for granted. Okay. Um, I can't remember the name of the story, but it's in 10th of December where the, the guy's freezing to death. I think it is 10th, 10th, of, 10th December. of December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the 10th of December. Um, he takes... You take a 10-year-old kid being going out and playing in the snow for granted. Okay. You don't okay. take that as a life-altering event. Here, he takes things that we're... He, he manipulates things that we take for granted and forces us to contemplate them. Things like work hard and you have a good life. Okay. Oh, oh Bernie Kowalski did not have a good life. No. Yeah. Uh, family means something. Okay. These people seem to... They don't abandon Bernie when she dies, but they certainly say, we're going to remember this, and they go on to promptly forget it. Okay. Also, stupid people are largely harmless. Okay. We take this for granted, don't we? We do. We, uh, it's just an idiot. Yeah. Let it go. Fine. Be fine. Stupid people can be so stupid that they can ruin your life. Okay. And if there's too many stupid... That's one of the main things going... Too many stupid people doing too many stupid things, everything goes to hell. Do you want to live in this America? No. 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 Why? I... Because... Stupid people are in charge of everything. Okay. And we're getting there. It's we're coming. We're pretty close. That freight train's a barreling. Uh, if I might comment on Saunders a little bit here, this is my uh, weekly stretch, my stretch of the week here. Okay. Uh, Saunders classifies himself as a Buddhist. He is a Nyingma Buddhist. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not super versed in this, but I tried to do a little bit of research on it. Uh, and Saunders' latest book that won the Man Booker Prize last year was Lincoln and the Bardo. I think there are a lot of elements of that in play here, especially with Bernie. Did you pick up on a little bit of that there? Um... Maybe not. Where, where, okay. where are you going? Uh, so this Nyingma Buddhism, again, hope I'm saying it right, is former Tibetan Buddhism. And after your death, before your rebirth, there is a period of flux, which is the bardo, if you wanted to get into that with Lincoln and the bardo, uh, where in an idealistic world, this is your period of enlightenment, where things make sense to you before you're reborn again. Uh, in a world where it, things didn't go right, you didn't prepare properly, it's a period of chaos. And it's a period of chaos uh, coupled with extreme hallucinations, things along that line. I think what we're getting here is Saunders has tried to attempt to create a very literal and physical bardo for Bernie. Bernie has done everything right in her life. And you could argue either way here that this is good or bad for her. Technically, this looks like it's bad for Bernie. Things are in chaos. Things are falling apart. Bernie has become a terrible person. But given the environment that she has lived in this stupid world that she has become accustomed bernie's enlightened man bernie is sitting down right now and says here's what we're doing because yeah. we're getting out of this situation we're going to make life better and this is how we're going to do it so i think this is bernie's period of rebirth as she is descending through this this is saunders playing with that uh, the budding buddhism ideas before moving into the bardo here. I think it's also, to some small extent, him toying with another type of idea that we take for granted, the good afterlife. Okay. Right? So this idea of the good afterlife, this idea of heaven, is relatively new. It is. Uh, it is. In, 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 
in many cultures, I, I obviously I can't speak for every culture, but in Western culture, so you go back to the, the Greeks, the afterlife was not where you wanted to be. Okay. It was bad stuff, right? Um, the Egyptians, I believe, only had an afterlife for the kings. Okay. Um, so all these, all these different religions and societies and cultures you look at, the afterlife was not a great place to be. You didn't want to be dead. Today, how many of these uh, Abrahamic religions are like you know? That's the goal, baby. Yeah, man. If, if you could, if you could, if you could pop yourself right now and guarantee a ticket to heaven, you do it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, so this idea of the afterlife not only not being great, but being so bad, Bernie seems to want to escape it. Okay. She's running away from it. And I think that's a good point to add in with the family as well. Here is, I mean. This is an impoverished family. They're in a bad situation, but you do have that like preemptive idea here that they do have that afterlife belief that you know things are going to get better. We're going to get through this. There's going to be a better place for us. Then you get smacked with Bernie coming back from the dead, and they're like, oh shit, yeah, this ain't as good as we hoped it would have been. Well, before that, you have being smacked in the face that Bernie's dead. Yes, right. The, the Bernie died, and it, it, it's so. This is really. <sighs> This is a really funny story of one bad event after another. Okay. That first page I read, what happens? His coworker gets fired. Have you ever been around when a coworker gets fired? Awkward. Very Terrif awkward. Terrifying more than that. Okay. It, it, it's, it's like watching someone die. You realize your own mortality. If it's that easy to fire someone, it's that easy to fire me. Okay. That's a fair right? statement. Very fair. So, and we just get closer and closer to these events. Um, it, it just, it's a... Tr it's a hell of a trick how Saunders does this. Yes. How Saunders takes a text and makes it terrifying, makes it depressing, and you can't stop laughing all the while. Yeah. And I think that was my biggest eye-opener when we first got into Saunders here is... You didn't know how to take it. I didn't know how to take yeah. it. Because, like, I feel like I should laugh at that, but that's not funny. Right. Right. We, oh, I think yeah, that's where I was going. going with that. I was ending at that point. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I usually at this point, this is where Adrian sweeps in with something. Uh, well, um... So, on a life level, we get this little nugget. I don't get it, Min says, all desperate. What happens? Please, what happens to him? You better freaking tell me. I already told you, Bernie says. He'll fly about 15 feet and live about three minutes. Bernie, God, Min says and starts to cry. You used to be so nice. I'm still so nice, says Bernie. And she bites into a sub and takes the, off the tip of her finger and starts chewing it up. That is the difference between nice and kind. Bernie is not nice here. Okay. Bernie used to be nice. Do you know the difference between nice and kind? Nice is saying what you think you have to say, kind is saying what you need to say. Right. So if, if, if you're here right now and you got, I don't know, like some type of stupid man bun or something, okay. um, and I were to say, no, it looks good, Dalton. It, 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 looks, it looks good. That is a nice thing to say because okay. I'm lying to you so that you don't feel bad about yourself. But if Fair. I tell you, you need to take a pair of shears to that damn thing okay. for your own good. I that look like the kind. bad guy, but I'm okay. kind. Okay. So what you're saying is, like, nice would be saying, oh, you'd be, like, a very attractive man from where I'm from, like, on, like, the west coast of things. But, like, let's be honest here. You look like shit. Yeah. Okay, just making like sure that. we get on that. Okay. So I was, I was totally hoping you'd be going for a dig at me and we could just do a back and forth here. But, no, don't you know that goes, but like, you, went you ahead dig, and... I go deeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how this works. We have a dynamic Dalton here. goes ahead and goes in on himself. <laughs> it, all my work is done. Uh, is there anything you also want to really tackle real quick here about Sea Oak? Because this is a very popular short story by Saunders, and I'm pretty disappointed that I haven't read it. Uh, I anything you want to comment on here? Um, I think we touched on everything that I've got written down. Okay. Uh, well, let's jump right in, though. What would you rate Sea Oak? So, this is a very good short story. I think that it is, like I said earlier, a bit limited by the fact that you're you're painted into a corner by it, okay. right? There's no real, there's no extracting very much from this text. It's all in there. Okay. So while this is very well written, it's very entertaining. The themes are deep. The themes are big. The themes are broad. They're only the themes that are listed. Okay. I give this ninety-two cocks out of a hundred. Okay, I feel better about that. I thought we were going like super lowball because like this is Adrian Fort justifying how he's going <laughs> to George Saunders a seventy. Uh, no, ninety-three decomposing body parts. Okay. I, I really enjoyed the piece. It was good. And, like, I was really afraid that, like, this was the first big review that I've tackled since, like, I've been back. I'm like, 
don't you highball it. <laughs> don't you highball it because he gave you George Saunders, but like 93. We're close. Okay, so what are the so I know we did your three bad things, but what are the detractors here for you? Why give it 93 instead of 97? Like I said, I do feel like it is rushed to me. I feel like I did want more of that. And like that that really always takes away from me because like sometimes it fits, sometimes it doesn't. But I don't feel like I needed an abrupt ending here. I wanted more from this story. But it didn't make you feel like you could flip back those 20 pages and start reading it all over again? You could, though. And yeah. this was a very easy short story to just pick up and read. Yeah. Uh, what would you suggest if you like C.O. by George um, Saunders? I would recommend Signs and Symbols by Vladimir Nabokov. Okay. Not Naughty Nobby's best piece, uh, but while this is depressing and funny, okay. Signs and Symbols is depressing and depressing. Okay. Uh, I went with something else we reviewed on this channel before. A Man Without a Country, Kurt Vonnegut. Okay. I think you get a lot of uh, couplings here with Kurt Vonnegut and Saunders. Absolutely. And if you're into that anti-consumerism, America's going to shit, Man Without a Country. It feels like the Man Without a Country could be our protagonist's grandfather. I love how we're talking about things going to shit, and I hope it picks up on the camera that there are sirens in your front yard. We could just do the Steve. Do you hear that? Sirens. Anyway, Unless if you they like this by. kind of thing, Adrian... <laughs> Hit like if you have not hit the like button by this time, if for no other reason than that I'm taking digs at Steve and he has a man bun. Hit subscribe if you have not already subscribed. And I think that's all we got for today. Yeah. Leave a comment in the link down below. All right. Jesus fucking. Set your timer. That's what it's uh, on clock mode for. Cock. Cock. You got the cock pulled up here? Are we doing that? Cock and boss. Like, have we just given up that much? <laughs> <laughs> Good.